The Writer's Craft, Writing Your Story, by Lear Lobo, also known as Dr. Cynthia Colloyne. This is a non-profit commons and ISTE Games and Simulations Network session for the Not at ISTE 2019 event. Location held in Second Life. Everyone has a story to share. The topics today are Why Writing Matters, Your Legacy, Writing Daily, Whose Story Is It, Your Audience, Focus, Genre, Theme, and of course we'll talk about a few future topics. This is part of a series on the writer's craft. Why Writing Matters Is your story about social good? Is it fiction or fantasy, or is it blended reality, a little of both? Writing is our raison d'etre. Why do we write? Well, it's to inform, to educate, to entertain. We're telling life stories. In social good, we may be looking at the challenges faced, life's value and meaning, empathy, and our joys and triumphs. Share your wisdom through your writing. If we think about your legacy, I'm reminded of the movie Out of Africa. Remember at the end, when Isaac Dennison's wonderful quote is told by Meryl Streep, will Africa sing a song of me is how I think of it. If I know a song of Africa, of the giraffe and the African new moon lying on her back, of the plows in the fields and the sweaty faces of the coffee pickers, does Africa know a song of me? Will the air over the plain quiver with the color that I have had on? Or the children invent a game in which my name is, or the full moon throw a shadow over the gravel of the drive that was like me? Or will the eagles of the Yangon hills, will they look out for me? Write daily, write without fear, keep a journal or blog, put down your notable quotables, your powerful thoughts. Let go of perfection. Don't second guess yourself. It's okay to make mistakes when you're getting your ideas down. Microblog on Twitter, but be careful what you say, right? <laughs> Photo journal. Collect your photos and let them inspire you. I'm featuring photos from the Fantasy Fair and from Shanaki Library and other events in Second Life that have had meaning for me. Maybe you like a video blog and you like to see and share both the sound and the texture of your writing. Remember, write first, edit later. Edits are like speed bumps. You know how they feel when you're driving. They feel even worse when you're writing. Keep track of your words and get them down first. Join a writer's community. You could join the National Novel Writing uh, month, which is uh, NaNoWriMo in November, or in July and in April, there's Camp NaNoWriMo. It's free, and you get to be part of a community. There are benefits and inspirational emails, and um, you can be part of a cabin and have this sense of community as you're writing. You're not alone, but write a few words each day, because writing is a lonely t uh, task. You are alone when you're writing, right? <laughs> but you're not alone in the sense that you're telling your story. Everyone has a story. So finish your first draft. You don't have to do a book. You could do a short story. It could be a testimonial. It could be something memorable that you want to save. Read it and then edit it. Your audience, who will read your story? Well, here we're sitting at Shanaki Library listening to the storytellers. Several times a week, they, they read and, and enact these very powerful, wonderful stories. On Sundays, they do tea time at Baker Street or other mysteries. Are you gonna talk about caregivers or mentors? Perhaps your family or your friends? Is your audience um, your community or is it the world? Are they also the subjects of your book? What do they want to know and what do you want to share? 
So your story's focus, is it about a character or more than one character? Is it about a place? Is the place that it, what matters most? Like Hogwarts, right? <laughs> or is it an event? Is it something, a moment in time? In Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, is Alice's story, is it her story or is it a story about Wonderland? What is the focus there? Is your story nonfiction or fiction? Maybe it's a little of both, right? Especially for confidentiality. When there's privacy issues, you might decide, you know, to, um, to, to form an analogy or a parallel story uh, to preserve the privacy of the people involved. Do you need an alias when you write y your own name? Or do you need an alias for your characters? And is it fiction? And if it is, is your story going to be genre fiction or literary fiction? Lastly, will the people featured in your story, if it's not fiction, if, it, if it's non-fiction, will they feel safe if others recognize their story? Well, let's look at fiction for a moment. Genre fiction are, are the categories on the right. Romance, mystery and suspense, science fiction and fantasy, westerns, and there's many more sub-genres. The characters irrevocably changed after the hero's journey. Genre fiction tends to follow the three extra um, stages of the hero's journey, the call to adventure, refusal to take the call, and so forth, going through conflict and crisis, escalating in tension until you, know, you reach the, um, the return with el the elixir, Literary fiction, in contrast, transforms the reader. So notice, genre fiction transforms the characters in the book, one or more of them. Literary fiction transforms you, the reader, when you read, read literary fiction. So it transcends the rules of genre fiction. And if you're wondering, what are those rules? We're really not going to get into them much. But let me give you an example. In romance fiction, two or more people meet, right? And early in the story, usually the first chapter, they have conflicts and crisis that, of course, keeps them apart or is a barrier to their love. Um, how they overcome these barriers is what makes the story interesting. And then, of course, at the end, there's an expectation they'll get together. Otherwise, it's like Romeo and Juliet, right? <laughs> they get together, but it's a tragedy. So in literary fiction, you might see parallels or symbolism. You might see metaphor. And certainly you're going to see emotion and tension. It makes the characters feel real and an impossible story believable. These are words by Donald Moss, who's given quite a few workshops, has several books, and is a noted agent in the uh, writing industry. This is from Fire in the Fiction, and I do recommend his work. Those same qualities are important for genre fiction too, or for other forms of fiction, and you can apply them also to your nonfiction. So if you were telling a social good story about some horrific event and how the people involved overcame it, you know, they triumphed over it, you might be very interested in explaining how they felt, what were the tensions, how did the room smell, you know, how did, you know, what you know, was it cold? Was it hot? You know, use the five senses and draw us into the story. Theme. There are a variety of themes in fiction. And of course, I've listed 11 possible here, but th there are probably hundreds. <laughs> and I'm giving you some links to some of those more detailed themes. But imagine, love conquers all. Jane Eyre. Death. Romeo and Juliet. It's also a love story, but with a tragic... Spoilers. <laughs> and then, of course, um, Good versus Evil, The Stand by Stephen King. A social good story, The Miracle Worker. Coming of Age, Little Women is the example. A story of power and corruption? Well, we can think of several. Lord of the Rings, Game of Thrones. Uh, there's quite a few. Survival. Well, for me, it's the Martian. Let's face it, when you're stranded on Mars, you don't have food, and you're trying to grow some, and the winds keep kicking up, 
that's survival. And then courage. We have the Hobbit. An unlikely hero has a call to action. Prejudice. There are many. To Kill a Mockingbird. And of course, I've listed Pride and Prejudice by, by Jane Austen. Then the individual versus society. Many of you may be thinking of 1984. But of course, my favorites are Star Trek. It was, uh, the movies uh, two through four when Spock makes the ultimate sac sacrifice because the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the one. But his teammates, you know, disagree. <laughs> and that's what makes the story so interesting. And then, of course, we have war. Scarlett O'Hara in Gone with the Wind, you know, that's a story about a place and a person. The place is, you guessed it, it's, it's uh, Tara, her, her estate. And of course it opens with it and it closes with it. And it's a, an amazing story. So I recommend you look at some of these stories and think about, and I know some of them were movies, but movies are important too. And here's a parting thought about movies. You know how we talk about active versus passive voice? Active voice is when you don't have a linking verb with your verb. It, it's past tense and you, you've put the, the reader in the action. You've brought the camera. If we were thinking of a movie, you've brought the camera close. So there's a close up on the faces. There's a close up on the action and we almost feel it. We're jerking in our seats in response to something horrific, right? Meanwhile, passive voice pulls the camera back. It gives us emotional distance. We're now looking at the scene uh, maybe in wide, wide spectrum, right? And of course, um, we see it, but we're kind of detached from it. Now there's a good reason for using passive voice and detachment. And an example would be, uh, she had discovered as opposed to she discovered. When you, when you start using a passive voice, you can also flip around the subject noun and you can also obscure who's performing the action. You can play some tricks with it. But one of the things to think about is if you're writing about something horrific, maybe you're writing about a hospice, maybe you're writing about people who are dying daily. And of course, the caregiver's perspective is they're trying to be cheerful and, and help everyone have a meaningful and wonderful life and to die with dignity, right? Well, that's a very sad and, and difficult uh, scenario. And if you're writing about it, you might have the reader care and, and feel the emotion, but at some point you might provide a little bit of relief through passive voice and through some detachment from the scene. It's a technique that I believe that caregivers have to exercise from time to time you know, to control their own emotions and to continue in that field. Well, there's some links there for themes and literary devices, and you, of course, can disagree with me. In your stories, you decide how much emotion and how much pathos is appropriate. So what are we going to talk about in future topics? Well, we're going to look at some writing topics, and I've already alluded to a couple of them but we really haven't talked about plot or story architecture. We haven't gotten into character development and we must have villains. In social good stories, the villains aren't always people. Sometimes they're disease, bacteria, poverty. There's a variety of villains. And then of course, the five senses, how we, how we um, help the reader experience empathy by understanding what it's like to be in that situation. Then of course some juicy conflicts, you gotta have them. And a story synopsis is, let's think of it as a sentence or two that describes the story and then perhaps a two page synopsis that summarizes it. So you have a sense of what are you doing in this story. Then decisions about nonfiction and of course APA style. Because if we're gonna talk about other people's work or um, other situations, it's very helpful to use references, citations, and of course to use integrity and, and use uh, an ethical writing style. I have other um, workshops online under digital storytelling and the writer's craft, and these slides are going online at slideshare.net slash nearlobal slash presentations. Another workshop will cover publishing 
I might need more than one. <laughs> it's a big topic. But of course, there's everything from publishing on the web, self-publishing, publishing ebooks, and then of course all the things you need for a book, uh, like book covers and uh, book formatting, front matter, the back cover. Um, some of you are thinking, boy, if I'm only doing a, an ebook or a Kindle or a Nook or you know one of these uh, forms of books, maybe an i um, iBook. The thing is, do I need a back cover? <laughs> and of course, think of it as, after they finish the story, what happens next in your book? Are you going to direct them to other books? Are you going to talk about the author? Are you going to give them some historical facts or where to find out more information? That kind of thing. Perhaps you have maps or um, you want to direct them back to your agency. If you're, if you're telling a social good story and you want them to participate in future stories, you could even invite them to participate in an anthology, which is a collection of stories written by different people, like chapters in a book. And then, of course, you can use some of your writing as a fundraising vehicle, perhaps little snippets from it, or short stories. Whatever you plan to do with your writing, don't forget to write. Writing matters. Any questions? You can contact me, and there's, there's contact information on several of my social media sites. I am on twitter.com slash Lobo. That's the easiest way to reach me by direct message or um, through a tweet. Join us for future sessions on The Writer's Craft, Write Often and Without Fear. I'm Lear Lobo, better known as Dr. Cynthia Colloyne, and keep on writing. Bye-bye.